Today we will be doing 11-3, areas of circles and sectors. For the area of a circle, the one we're going to constantly use is area equals pi r squared. R, of course, being the radius of a circle. So we'll get into question number one. It wants the area of the circle, it says, rounded to the nearest tenths place. Our radius is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down, that my radius equals 5. So when I plug it in, my area is equal to pi times 5 squared. Rounded to the nearest tenths place, I get area equals 78.5 inches squared. Okay, That's pretty basic. Just plug it in. Um, question number two though, this time they didn't give us the radius. This time they gave us the diameter. So the first thing we need to do is say, hey, if I have the diameter, how do I get to the radius? Well, radius equals diameter divided by two. So 20 divided by 2, my radius equals 10. So now when I plug it into the equation, my area equals pi times 10 squared. Area equals 314.2 meters squared. And we'll do one more practice with just finding the area. This time again, they gave us the radius. So my radius equals 9.5. So the area of this circle equals pi times 9.5 squared. Now I put parentheses there. You can put them, you don't need them. Um, answer comes out to 283.5 inches squared. Well, now we'll get into like word problems that are doing the same exact thing, but they put it into words instead. So we'll start with question number seven. The area of a circle is 153.9 square centimeters. Find the diameter. We're going to be using that same equation. Now you have a choice to get that radius by itself now, or you can plug everything into the equation and then solve for the radius. So if I'm just using that top equation and I want to get R by itself, so I don't have numbers, I just have the variables, okay? My first step would be divide by pi on both sides. So I would get area over pi equals r squared. Well, again, I want the r by itself. So what's the opposite of squaring something? Square root. And now my r is actually by itself. So if I'm just looking for radius, if I take the square root of the area divided by pi, I have the radius by itself. Okay. So for number seven, I'm going to solve for the radius, and then from the radius we'll go to the diameter. So the square root of the area divided by pi is going to equal my radius. So when I plug that in, my radius is 7. But it's asking for diameter. So diameter equals 2r. So diameter equals 2 times 7. My diameter equals 14 centimeters. Okay. 
Next question. We'll go ahead and do question number nine. So I'll just scroll this up a little bit. Okay. Question number nine says find the radius. Well, as we had on the top there, the square root of the area divided by pi is equal to my radius. When I plug that in and I round, um, it's 16.99, but because it says tenths place, it's going to be 17.0 inches equals my radius. So if you're just looking for area, radius, or diameter, you'll just use this equation and plug into the parts that you have and solve for the missing variable, okay? The next lesson is looking for sectors of a circle. Our equation for sectors of a circle. Um, this is very similar to arc length, if you guys remember. Arc length was that outside piece of the circle and it was only a piece of the circle, but it was just dealing like with the crust of the pizza. Well, now we're talking about the actual area of it. So the formula is going to look familiar. Area is equal to x over 360. X is gonna stand for the number of degrees. How many degrees out of 360 do you have? And it's be multiplied by the area formula that we just did on the front. Okay. So this is one long equation. So for question number one, I'm gonna go ahead and label the pieces that it gave me. So the degrees inside my shaded area is going to be my x. So in this case, x equals 45 degrees. My radius, of course, goes from, has endpoints on the circle and the center. So my radius is three. When I plug them into the equation, I'm gonna have area equals 45 degrees out of 360 times pi three squared Area equals 3.5 feet squared. Okay. Question number two is exactly the same thing. There's nothing different about it. I have the degrees that are inside my circle, and I'm given my radius. So I'm going to label that my degrees is x. And again, it's the degrees in the shaded area. And my R equals 10. For the area of this circle, area equals the degrees over 360 times pi 10 squared. Okay. And this says round to the nearest tenth again, so I'm at 87. 0.3 meters squared. Okay. Question number three. Okay, so I see this 20 here. Common mistake is just to say that x equals 20, but that 20 is not in the shaded area. Okay, I need the degrees in the shaded. Well, we know every circle has 360 degrees. So that 20 is that little white piece. So 360 minus the 20. Okay. My shaded area is 340 degrees. So X equals 340. My radius equals 7. So the area of this circle equals 340 out of 360, which is most of the circle times pi seven squared. The area of this circle equals 145.4 meters squared. 
And now we'll do one word problem just to wrap this up, okay? It says, for a party, Samantha wants to have finger sandwiches. She cuts the sandwiches into circles. If she cuts each circle into three congruent pieces, what is the area of each piece? Okay, so here's her sandwich. Again, she's cutting them into three equal pieces, and she wants the area of one. So basically, it's like one of these sections is shaded. Well, what it doesn't have in this picture is it doesn't tell us how many degrees. But if they're three equal pieces, we know that a whole circle has 360 degrees. If I divide it by three equal pieces, each segment has 120 degrees. So here is 120. My radius is 2.5. So x equals 120. r equals 2.5. When I plug them into the equation, again, I just want one segment. So the area equals 120 degrees out of 360. I'm going to multiply that by pi r squared. The area of one piece of sandwich is 6.5 inches squared. So that is all for our section of areas and circles and sectors. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Um, hopefully these videos help you on your geometry journey.